a warm greetings to all the eminent delegates present in the International Summits and Conference on Material Science, Nanotechnology and Biomanufacturing Materials. I am RCSI, PhD scholar under the guidance of Prof. Kaushik Paul from Bharat University, Chennai, India. The title of my presentation is Nanomaterials Enable Liquid Crystalline Optical Materials Towards Switchable Device Implementation and Exclusive Applications. We all know that one of the innovative developments in the field of nanoscience and nanotechnology is undoubtedly the controlled fabrication of materials on the nanometer scale. Physical and chemical properties of a material is very much related to its morphology, dimensions and configurations. In this presentation, I will be explaining the fabrication method of CDS, zinc oxide, graphene nanostructures, liquid crystals and the homogeneous distribution of these nanomaterials into hydrogen bonded liquid crystal and its remarkable properties. The electro-optic switching properties of this nano-hybrid composite will also be examined. Green chemistry approach for the preparation of gold nanoparticles and its application is also examined in this presentation. This is the table of content of my presentation. Now let's try to understand what is this nanoscience and nanotechnology. We all know that in today's world, nanotechnology plays a vital role. From home to industry, this small but big technology has been used. So nanotechnology can be defined as the manipulation of matter on an atomic or molecular scale. It deals with matter at a level that most of us find hard to imagine as it involves objects with dimensions of 100 billions of a meter, that is 1 by 800th of the thickness of a human hair or even less. At this new dimension, these materials exhibit new functionalities and properties which find a lot of applications. Placing atoms as though they were bricks, nanotechnology will give us complete control over the structure of matter allowing us to build any substance or structure permitted by the laws of nature. Nanotechnology is already being used in automobile tires, landmine detectors and com computer disk drives and electronics etc. Thus in a nutshell we can say that the goal of this technology is to make tiny devices called nanomachines. This chart gives us a comparison of various objects on a nanometer scale. We can see here the human being, the dimension is around 1.7 meter and the size is of 5 millimeter, bacteria is 0.01 millimeter and the molecule is of 1 nanometer in size. Applications of nanotechnology. Nanotechnology find application in various fields like optical engineering, defense and security, bioengineering, cosmetics, nanofabrics, energy, medicines and drugs, nanobiotechnology, nano devices, etc. Some of the commercial application of nanotechnology is as shown here. The fuel cell is a nano-engineered battery, light in weight and flexible, just like a paper. It can be rolled, twisted, folded or cut into a number of shapes with absolutely no loss of mechanical efficiency. Other energy supplement is the solar cell. Nanotube also find a lot of application in medical science targeted drug delivery system and it enables the mankind to diagnose and treat all the major diseases such as cancer, HIV, etc. Artificial retina and tissue regeneration are the other examples of nanotube applications in life science. Aerogel is a porous ultralight material with low density and it has been used as an effective insulating material. Now let's have a look into the liquid crystalline optical material. Liquid crystal is a state of matter which has properties between those of conventional liquid and those of solid crystals. For instance, we can say that a liquid crystal may flow like a liquid, but its molecules may be oriented in a crystal-like way. There are many different types of liquid crystal phases which can be distinguished by their different optical properties. The hydrogen bonding has a major role in determining the performance of liquid crystal and it serves as a solid non-covalent intermolecular force for crystal packaging. This shows the various classification of liquid crystal. Liquid crystal is broadly classified into lyotropic and thermotropic. In thermotropic liquid crystal, the phase transition changes with an increase in temperature. Whereas in lyotropic liquid crystal, the 
phase transition occur by adding or removing solvents. Thermotropic liquid crystals are further classified based on the shape of their molecules into road-like, bent core and disk-like liquid crystals. The two uh, phases available are pneumatic phase and smectic phase. In pneumatic phase, only the long axis of the molecules are parallel and the ends are staggered at random intervals. Whereas in smectic phase, the long axis of the molecules are parallel and the molecules are also arranged in plate. The smectic phase is further classified into smectic A and smectic C. Now let's have a look into the optoelectronic switchable device implementation by CDS nanowire liquid crystal nanocomposite. This figure shows the various steps involved in the fabrication of CDS nanowire. CDS nanowire is fabricated using hydrothermal synthesis where aqueous solution consisting of ethylene diamine, cadmium acetate, thioacetamide is prepared and it is left for one hour under continuous uniform stirring by a magnetic stir. Then 100 ml of ammonium solution is added which turns the solution into dark yellow. This mixture was then left for three hours at constant temperature and magnetic stirring. It was then transferred into a Teflon lined autoclave and it is maintained at 165 degrees centigrade for 18 hours. It is then left at naturally cooling in an open air atmosphere. The yellow precipitate was then uh, collected by centrifugal separation and it is washed with deionized water and ethanol to remove all the impurities and it was then dried vapor for 5 hours at 65 degrees centigrade. The octane sample was then dried out using continuous flow of nitrogen gas. Thus, the CDS nanomaterial was synthesized. Benford liquid crystal was then fabricated and then the synthesized CDS nanowire was dispersed into the liquid crystal to form a nanohybrid composite. The uh, ITO liquid crystal cell fabrication is also shown here in this figure. The two glass substrate with ITO coating is taken. And it has been separated with a spacer of 2 micrometer to provide a gap in between the electrodes. And this free cell is then placed into a hot plate under treatment of 5 degrees centigrade per minute. The synthesized CDS nanowire dispersed Bencore liquid crystal samples are distributed into this heated cell by the flow of capillary action. The microscopic and spectroscopic analysis of the sample is shown here. The FESM images are shown here and FESM helps to determine the morphology and particle size of CDS nanowires. These images show that CDS nanowires are of uniform thickness and high aspect ratio and are well crystallized. The CDS nanowires have very low diameter in the order of 7 to 10 nanometer and their length is of around 1 micrometer to 80 micrometer. The HRTEM images shows the formation of uniformly shaped CDS nanowire. The selected area diffraction pattern as shown here indicate the polycrystalline nature of the nanomaterial dispersed liquid crystal and this figure shows the uniform distribution of high yield CDS nanowires. Then the atomic force microscopy was performed and this image shows the uh, film sum. This image shows the films are extremely rough, dense and non-uniform. The surface roughness estimated was around 125 nanometer and the thickness was found to be 7.8 nanometer. And conductive, uh, conducting more AFM was performed and it helped us to determine the maximum flow of surface current and the surface current was determined to around 3 nanometer to 12 nanometer nanoampere and it gets saturated at a DC bias voltage of 3 volt. Then energy dispersion X-ray spectroscopy was performed and the peak of uh, CDS and S in the EDS pattern uh, indicate that the K-shell element cadmium and the L-shell element uh, sulfur exist with an atomic ratio of 50.5 to 35.5. It also shows that the CDS nanostructure is associated with other chemical elements like uh, sodium, chlorine and uh, fluorine. And finally, the polarization optical microscopy study was performed and this images, POM images, uh, shows the phase change as various temperature. And this phase changes are the critical uh, and uh, is a 
um, critical um, intimation that uh, this material is working as an electro optic switch. And it, this research work has been published in their Organic Electronics in 2019. Now let's have a look into the other fascinating nanomaterial that is zinc oxide nanocomb. This shows the various steps involved in the fabrication of the zinc oxide nanocomb. Here, zinc acetate dehydrate is um, mixed with alkaline medium like sodium hydroxide and uh, 3 molar potassium hydroxide. It is continuously stirred for 30 minutes. Then a milk type solution is produced, which is then moved into an autoclave, maintained at a temperature of 120 degrees centigrade for two hours. It is then air cooled to room temperature, which results in the formation of a dark gray precipitate, which is then uh, washed thoroughly to remove all the impurities with ethanol and deionized distilled water. The sample was then dried with a continuous supply of nitrogen gas. This results in the formation of zinc oxide nanospikes. The so obtained zinc oxide nanospikes are then transformed through vapor deposition process into nanocom with the development of thin ribbon like stem and teeth shaped structure on the stem surface. And this uh, steps indicate the fabrication of liquid crystal. Here, by adding two moles of non eloxy benzoic acid with one mole of seberic acid in Dimethyl formide intermolecular double hydrogen bonded mesogens can be fabricated. Further, it is continuously stirred for 12 hours at room temperature of 30 degrees centigrade to obtain white precipitation in a dense solution, after which the excess DMF is removed and crystallized with dimethyl sulfoxide. And uh, the synthesized nanomaterial is then dispersed with liquid crystal. For that, a small amount of zinc oxide nanocomb is mixed with 0.005 percentage of the pure liquid crystal suspension. It is then continuously stirred for an hour, which is then followed by ultrasonic vibration that enable the nanomaterial to be completely dispersed into the liquid crystal material. The obtained nanocomposite is then vacuum dried at 50 degrees centigrade for about two hours. And this shows the setup of ITO liquid crystal cell that is iridium titanium oxide liquid crystal cell. Here the ITO electrodes on a glass substrate is separated by a spacer of around 2 micrometer. And the nanomaterial dispersed liquid crystal is uh, uniformly distributed into the space between the electrodes through the capillary action. Here shows the microscopic and spectroscopic analysis of the uh, zinc oxide nanoscope dispersed in liquid crystal. Uh, these are the FESM images and the shape and size of the synthesized zinc oxide nanomaterial are examined through this FESM. And here you can see the uh, images at various magnification level. And this shows that the zinc oxide is obtained in the form of a flower shape morphology and they are densely grown over the entire substrate surface. And it also reveals that the nanoflower morphology is formed by the aggregation of multiple one-dimensional zinc oxide nanospikes. You can see that the nanospikes are emerging radially from the uh, central pod. And it is also seen that the nanoflowers do not possess uniform diameter. And this figure shows the uh, formation of zinc oxide nanocomb. Nanocombs are evenly spread and grown abundantly over the surface. And it is shown that the nanocomb consists of uh, nano road like branches, which we call it ST, and long ribbon like stem. And these are the HRM images and the um, selected area diffraction pattern. They are used for determining the crystalline nature, size, and shape of the synthesized zinc oxide nanocomb. These images were critically analyzed to describe the atomic structure and it, the figure demonstrates that the nanocomb teeth are associated along one side of the ribbon like stem. The HRM image and the side pattern of a branch of nanocomb is indicated here and it provides an uh, important study of the crystal structure of the zinc oxide nanocomb. Then here this shows the chemical mapping of the zinc oxide nanomaterial dispersed into liquid crystal. And this shows the presence of uh, each material with a percentage. 
here it shows that the zinc uh, is available with a percentage of 56% and oxygen 28.5% and other materials like fluorine 9.8% and chlorine exist in the percentage of 5.7%. Chemical mapping offers an effective approach of exploring atomic level structure, chemical and functional information of the nanomaterial. And this is the EDS pattern. Uh, here, the development of zinc oxide nanomaterial is indicated by the high peak of zinc and oxygen. It also confirms that zinc and oxide occurs with an atomic ratio of 24.63 to 18.34. And these all, uh, this chemical mapping and EDS pattern help us to determine the uh, appropriate concentration of zinc oxide nanomaterial to be blended with liquid crystal to create a hybrid composite matrix. And these are the AFM results. AFM is again used for finding the surface roughness. And surface roughness is uh, important in the way that they govern the way nanomaterial interact with the external parameters such as light, dopped molecules, etc. And uh, we can say that it determines the functionality and properties of material. And this is uh, conducting more atomic force microscopy image and which help us to understand the surface current. And these are the uh, uh, images of the polarization optical microscopy which again shows the phase change at various temperature which is a clear indication of the electro-optic implementation of this um, zinc oxide nanocom dispersed liquid crystal. Next, we'll have a look into the uh, other important nanomaterial that is graphene and graphene oxide. Graphene is considered as an important nanomaterial because of its excellent electrical conductivity. And uh, this electrical conductivity is because there is no band gap because of the overlapping of valence and conduction um, band. And it also have other properties like optical, thermal and me mechanical properties. Graphene is also considered as a toughest material. And the oxidized form of graphene known as graphene oxide has plentiful oxygenic group and it demonstrates outstanding hydrophilic nature, dispersibility and steadiness. This figure shows the fabrication of graphene here you, uh, which is uh, carried out using a thermal CVD method thermal chemical vapor deposition method. Here, um, a nickel film is used and uh, it is evaporated on a substrate of silicon and it is annealed at a temperature of around 1000 degrees centigrade for approximately 20 minutes with argon and hydrogen, which results in the formation of nickel grains. After chemical vapor deposition, um, methane of the using methane and hydrogen, graphene was formed on the nickel and the size of graphene is limited by the size of the nickel grain. This shows the formation of graphene using copper catalyst. And here, this, these are the various steps involved in the fabrication of graphene oxide and this method is known as the improved Hummers method. Here, uh, sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid uh, is mixed and it is stirred continuously for several minutes followed by the addition of graphite powder. The mixture was then continuously stirred by uh, slowly adding potassium permanganate until the solution turns dark green. Excess potassium permanganate was eliminated by stirring the solution with hydrogen peroxide. The mixture is then diluted by adding water. Later, the solution was uh, left without stirring for the particles to be collected at the bottom and the excess water is filtered out. The obtained mixture is cleaned thoroughly by centrifugation with HCl and deionized water. The gel-like um, product attained is then vacuum dried to obtain graphene oxide powder. These are the microscopic and spectroscopic analysis result of the graphene and graphene oxide. Here, the AFM uh, measurement suggests that the surface is not uh, hom homogeneous. They, uh, it is having non-uniform surface with uh, peaks, which shows that there is roughness on the surface. And these are showing the SEM and uh, optical images. And it is used, uh, and also the Raman uh, spectrum and Raman images of the D, G and 2, uh, 2D bands and it displays a different density and film thickness. The color contrast under an optical microscope and Raman spectra are used to determine the thickness and uniformity of the graphene film. 
the Raman spectrum from the uh, from the lightest pink background. Uh, it indicate a mono layer graphene, and this blue colored circle indicate the bi layer graphene, and this green color indicate the tri layer graphene. The same image picture demonstrate the thickness variation more clearly. Here we can see the green, uh, pink, and the blue circles, which is indicating the uh, mono layer, bi layer, and tri layer graphene respectively. Uh, the existence of uh, more than one layer in the flakes is clearly visible on the G and 2D maps here. The, the, uh, there are a peak high difference in both the G and 2D bands in the uh, <coughs> ringled area as well as broadening of the 2D band. The region with the lightest pink color account for more than 95% and hence we can see, um, conclude that monolayer graphene is formed uh, in a huge amount. Uh, compared to the bilayer and the uh, trilayer graphene. And this shows the same image of the graphene oxide. The surface mor morphology shows the surface showing the carbon and oxygen blood in these figures. And this is the EDX of the uh, graphene oxide. This shows the presence of only the carbon, which shows that uh, this is pure graphite flakes. There is no oxygen here. But here you can see that the uh, presence of oxygen is also indicated, uh, which shows that the formation of graphene oxide. And this is the FTIR spectra, that is Fourier transform infrared spectra of the graphene oxide. Uh, the, uh, uh, the CO and C double, uh, C double bond oxygen display this, uh, that the formation of graphene oxide. And this work was published in the Journal of Molecular uh, Structure. Uh, it was published recently in 2021. Uh, we all know that the nanomaterials are synthesized using chemicals that are hazardous to the environment as well as the human beings. Uh, the green synthesis has numerous advantage over chemical and physical method, which is most beneficial as they do not require toxic stabilizers and chemicals. Uh, here, the green synthesis technique chooses water as solvent and they always use renewable and ecological materials such as plant extract, food waste, etc. instead of highly toxic reducing agents and stabilizing agents. Here, I am going to explain the green chemistry synthesis of gold nanoparticle using tamarind indica fruit extract and its application. Uh, first, tamarind pulp was uh, prepared. For that, tamarind indica fruit was kept in 50 milliliter uh, of hot deionized water for 5 minutes. Then this tamarind was squeezed well. The extra extract of this fruit was then filtered and stored. And to this tamarind pulp, uh, pulp drops of um, tetrachloric acid was um, added. Then the color changed from uh, light yellow to purple brown, indicating the formation of gold nanoparticles. These are the microscopic analysis of the synthesized gold nanoparticles. Uh, uh, FESM of the gold nanoparticle shows that the dimension is around 50 nanometer. And the morphology and crystalline nature was confirmed by the HRTM image. And this shows the uh, UV visible analysis and this shows the uh, um, presence of gold nanoparticle at a wavelength of 550 nanometer. The green synthesized uh, gold nanoparticles find potential applications in uh, the uh, targeted drug delivery system, particularly in the treatment of uh, cancer. Uh, mainly because it is bacteriostatic, antioxidative and anti-corrosive. And another important application is the photothermal therapy application. Uh, here, by controlling its size, the uh, light absorption eff efficiency of gold nanoparticles can be improved. And what we can see here is the gold nanoparticles are loaded with uh, drugs and it is guided by this magnetic field towards the tumor cell. And when it is near to the tumor cell, the tumor cell swallows this uh, gold nanoparticle loaded with drugs and uh, the 
infrared region, uh, infrared light provides energy which are converted into heat by the golden nanoparticle and kill the tumor cell, thus achieving the targeted uh, chemotherapy. And this work was published in Materials Today Chemistry in 2020. And some of other publications are shown here. Conclusion and Outlook Various nanomaterials such as CDS nanowire, zinc oxide, nanocom, graphene, graphene oxide were successfully synthesized and investigated through various spectroscopies. The results demonstrate that the nanomaterial dispersed into liquid crystals regulate the electro-optic properties of the liquid crystal system and thus contribute to the innovative switching mechanism in liquid crystal and other optoelectronic devices. Gold nanoparticles hold great potential in bioimaging and thermal treatment with their ability to be directed towards targeted cells. Similarly, nanoassembly vaccines have the potential to reshape the future of adjuvants and provide new generation vaccines. Acknowledgement I respect and thank the organizing committee, uh, ISCMB 2021, for providing me an opportunity to do this presentation. I owe my deep gratitude to my research guide. Professor Kaushik Paul, who took keen interest and guided me all along by providing all the necessary information for developing a good presentation. I am thankful to and fortunate enough to have the presence of esteemed delegates and experts in the field of nanotechnology. And these are my references. Thank you for your kind attention.